Yeah, one of those days. Everybody settle in. That's it. Try to keep your eyes open. At least pretend that you're listening to Brad. Anyhow, yes. Yeah, so. We're going to start our worship service off with a song service. We'll start off, please, with song number 108. The Lord is in his holy temple. Song number 108. We'll sing ourselves awake today. Here we go. Let's all sing. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Keep silence. Keep silence. Keep silence before Our next song will be song number 877. 877. Won't it be wonderful there? Amen to that. We'll sing all three verses of 877. And again, let's all sing. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? And did the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Wonderful there, having no burdens to bear, and joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Walking and talking with Christ the Supernal One, won't it be wonderful there? Praising, adoring the matchless Eternal One, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there, having no burdens to bear, <clears throat> joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, oh won't it be wonderful there, there where the tempest will never be sweeping us, won't it be wonderful there, sure that forever the Lord will Keeping us, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burden to bear, <clears throat> and joyously singing with heart bells all ringing. Oh, won't it be wonderful there? Announcements. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. So last night we had our bi-monthly game night. I think we ended up with 38 people. 38. 38. Uh, it was a success. It was really fun. I know I had to play ping pong for at least three hours with the little ones last night, but that was fun. Glad to be here for that one. Uh, we have homecoming April 16th through the 19th. Uh, Brother Jim Roberts, he'll be here with us. Uh, then we have another prayer request here. It's for Melissa Walmack. She is going through cancer treatment. She's a teacher at Section High School. Uh, we're looking to get her on the list, on the prayer list. So, Melissa Walmack. Yeah, Melissa Walmack. Um, and do we have any other updates on anyone on the prayer list? Anyone? Yes, Anthony, he's sick. He's, he's sick. And then JD, they're out of town. They should be back. I'm not sure when they'll be back, but... Uh, if there's anything else, just let me or Andy or any of us know, and we'll get them on there. I don't, I don't know who you're pointing at. Yes. Oh, who? Who was it? I got to see my great-grandbaby. Yes. She got to see her great-grandbaby. Was it yesterday you got to, or Friday? We know you were excited Jacob about that. Jacob Thomas. Jacob Thomas. <laughs> yes. Jacob Thomas. Yeah. Uh, but if, if there's... <laughs> She said he's about this big, so he's real little. Nah, I'm not too big. It's like a fish story. But if y'all have anything else, uh, just let us know and we'll get them put on there. The reason we're chuckling about that baby being this big is that the daddy of that baby was this big. And Grandma can remember that. The daddy now is this big. <laughs> He wasn't here for a year or two, and he shot up like a balloon. He was right up there. Our next song will be song number 753. Congratulations. We'll sing the first and third verse of Farther Along. I've been told to sing this a little slower. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why it 
it should be thus all the day long while there are others living about us never molested though in the wrong farther along we'll know all about it and farther along we'll understand why well cheer up my brother let the sun shine and we understand it all by and by when we see Jesus coming in glory when he comes from his home in the sky then we shall meet him in that bright mansion and we'll understand it farther along we'll know all about it and farther along we'll understand why cheer up my brother and live in the sunshine and we'll understand it all by and by before we have our scripture reading and opening prayer. We'll sing song number 800, please. Song number 800. What a friend we have in Jesus. We'll sing the first and third verse of 800, and then we'll have our scripture reading and our opening prayer. And again, let's all sing. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit, and oh, what needless pain we bear. Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise for say, take thee. Well, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. This morning's scripture reading comes from 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you recognizing how great and wonderful you are, that you are the creator of all things, and that all things come from you and exist in you. And we know that you have no beginning and no end, and we worship and adore you, Father, for all that you are. We thank you for this opportunity we have to be together to worship you and to uh, submit our very lives to you. We thank you for the privilege of prayer, knowing that you always listen and answer our prayers. And Father, we thank you for this church and the 
uh, blessing and the spiritual strength that we get from each other and just continue to uh, bless this church and help us to look to you for guidance to always follow your ways and to depend on you for salvation and it's and it's Jesus who made salvation possible and we're so thankful for his sacrifice and that the love he showed in, in making that sacrifice. Uh, Father, we pray that you'd be with those that are dealing with illness. We pray for your healing for them, that you would watch over them, um, that you would bring them back to their normal health, that we might be an encouragement in some way to them. We thank you, Father, for uh, just being there for us and help us to uh, be there for each other and to honor you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thank you. To help our mind, prepare our minds rather for the Lord's Supper, we'll sing the first and fourth verse of song number 349, 10,000 Angels. Following this song, we'll partake of the Lord's Supper. 349, 1 and 4. And again, let's all sing. They bound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior so pure and free from sin. They said, Crucify him, he's to blame. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you. cry the cross of shame he took alone and when he cried it's finished he gave himself to die salvation's wondrous plan was done he could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the set him free. He could have called 10,000 angels, but he died alone for you and me. But he died alone for you and me. I'd like to read a few verses. I'll be reading from Luke 22, and I will start in verse 17. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup you have in my blood, which is shared for you. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Dear God, we ask your blessings on this bread that the Christians represent Christ as body as it died on the cross for our sins. We pray that everyone partakes this in a well and pleasing manner to you. And these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
God, likewise, we ask your blessings on this cup that the Christians represent Christ's blood as he died on the cross for our sins. We pray that everyone partakes this in a well-pleasing manner to you. And these things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Please, the Lord's Supper, but we have a, uh, a basket for the offering in the back hallway there. This offering helps us keep the Lord's work working here locally and throughout the world that we can reach the lost souls. Let's give thanks for that offering. Dear God, we thank you for this day that you've given us. And we thank you for many blessings. And we thank you for this opportunity to partake of this offering. And we pray this offering that helps your work here locally and throughout the world that it may reach lost souls that they can have hope of heaven. We pray that everyone that gives does it willfully and with a cheerful heart. These things we ask in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Our next song will be song number seven, please. Song number seven. We'll sing the first, second, and fourth verse of Immortal Invisible, God Only Was. Song number seven. And again, let's all sing. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we be song number 490 and in my book it says it's a stand-up song so 490 we'll sing the first and third verse of it is well with my soul and let's all sing when peace like a river So 
song. That's one of my favorites. It is well with my soul, not because of anything that I did, but because of what Christ did for us and the promise that he made in his word. It's so good to be here to share in this time with you of praise and thankfulness to God, but also to have this time together to encourage and build each other up. And I hope that this morning something has moved you or will move you to seek a closer walk with God and a stronger relationship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. We are a family of believers who are looking to God's will for direction in our lives. And that leads us to the word found in 1 John chapter 3. If you turn there in 1 John chapter 3, we're going to be looking at several passages there. 1 John 3. Nikki Cruz was the leader of the toughest gang in New York City. His Satanist parents abused him brutally, so he grew up a hardened man, void of love and full of hatred. I wanted to do to others what my mother did to me, Nikki says. I used to feel good when I hurt some people. But privately, he didn't feel good. Only two people saw the desperate condition of Nikki's heart. One was a psychologist. He told me about five times, there's a dark side in your life that nobody can penetrate, Nikki. You are walking straight to jail, the electric chair, electric chair and hell. There's no hope. The other was a preacher who risked his life to tell Nikki there was hope. And the preacher said to him, God has the power to change your life. To which Nicky started cursing loudly and he spit in the preacher's face and he decked him. Nicky told the preacher, get out of here. I don't believe in what you say. And Nicky never expected what he heard the preacher say next. He said, you could cut me up into a thousand pieces and lay them in the street. Every piece will still love you. Over the next two weeks, Nikki began to question. And for two weeks, he couldn't sleep thinking about what that preacher had said. Then Nikki and his gang showed up at a revival the preacher was holding. One by one, they gave their lives to Christ. It was the crucifixion, Jesus' death on the cross that grabbed Nikki. I was choked up with pain and my eyes were fighting and tears began to come down and more tears and I was fighting and then I surrendered, says Nikki. I let Jesus hug me and I let my head rest, my head rest on his chest and I said, I'm sorry, forgive me. And for the first time I told somebody, I love you. And the love that Nikki got in return radically changed his life. This is what it's about. This is the truth. This is the doctrine laid out by Jesus himself. And nothing is as challenging as this. This one's so hard, we try to leave it out as far as the center of what we teach and do. Or we try to make it something extra or something optional. But it's the center of Christianity. Love. This is what we need to value in the church, loving each other, loving others like never before. John identifies this as one of the big two commandments of Christianity. John says here in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 3, here's how we know we know him if we keep his commands. What commands? Let's see the list. What are the commands that we're supposed to keep? Well, in 1 John 3, verse 23, John elaborates. And this is his command 
to trust in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as He commanded us. Work on these two, trusting Jesus more and loving each other more. These are His commands. Keep these two and you'll know Him. Think for a moment about how you know what love is. What is love? I know it's relatively easy to say to someone. Sometimes it's hard because saying it can overwhelm you with emotion. Sometimes I'm reluctant to say it, especially if I'm not sure I can back it up with action. Some say love is not an emotion. It's a decision or a commitment that you make. And yes, love is a matter of the will. It's something that you decide to have for another. But I also have a hard time separating it from emotion. To decide to love someone is to make a huge emotional investment. The biggest emotional investment we'll ever make in this life. You know, some things we can invest in emotionally. Maybe like buying a certain house. You, you find a house that you love and you get so excited about it. But if it doesn't work out, what you might experience is disappointment. But invest in a person. Decide, deciding to love that person. If that doesn't work out, as in you lose that person, or the person doesn't reciprocate, or the person backs out, what you'll experience emotionally will dwarf disappointment. It'll be sadness, or humiliation, anger, grief. So even if you say love is not an emotion, it's so intertwined with emotion, it's hard to tell where emotion ends and commitment begins. Yes, you do choose to love someone, but sometimes emotionally, love chooses you. And when there is love, when you love, it's like gravity. It draws you in. It changes you. In the words of 1 Corinthians 13, it gives you patience, kindness, trust, and hope, among many other things. It motivates you. It brings reward, but it can also ironically bring pain. It's the risky business of love, and there's nothing like it in this world. Our passage from 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16, which is remarkably similar to John 3.16, cuts to the chase on what love is. Forget what the world or even religion tries to tell us. The verse says, here's how we know what love is. That he laid down his life for us. That Jesus came for us and that he lived his life for us, that he laid it down, gave it up because of his love for us. And he did this regardless of whether we would choose to love him back or not. So John takes this example of true love, the cross, the most astounding example of love the world has ever seen, and he turns it back on us. Here's what love looks like. Jesus on the cross, not just dying on the cross, but submitting to the beatings and the ridicule and the false accusations, really the full fury of hell, and even refusing to drink a painkiller before spikes were driven through his hands and feet. That's love. Going so far with it that there's no doubt in our minds that he loves us. Here's the hard part. But it's also transformative. Here's how we know what love is. That he laid down his life for us. And we should lay down our lives for our brothers. 
Did you hear that? That we should lay down our lives for each other. Now, what does that mean? My first thought, my thoughts first go to the time that this was written. When following Jesus could have meant imprisonment or death. And I imagine in that day a church member arrested for teaching about Jesus and he's hauled in for questioning. And they ask for names. Does he give them names to avoid punishment or does he refuse to cooperate, putting his life on the line for his brothers? Now that idea sounds plausible, doesn't it? And it certainly happened many times in those early days and really even in those early centuries. It still happens in some parts of the world today. But it's not necessarily what John was thinking about. Laying down our lives doesn't have to be about death here. I think it's more like a metaphor, like sticking our necks out for each other. Jesus stuck his neck out for us, and we ought to stick our necks out for our spiritual family. Which sticking our neck out might be a reference to the guillotine, by the way. John explains what he means. Verse 17 says, If anyone has the things of life and sees his brother in need and has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Here's love. Lay down your life. Stick your neck out. Take a risk with each other by meeting each other's needs. Love is investing in each other. And there are three ideas in this verse. One is that we recognize our abundance if anyone has the things of life. And it could be that your abundance is money. But it could also be possessions. Like John the Immerser once said, the one with two coats should give to the one who has none. Your abundance could be time. It could be working with your hands. It could be cooking. It could be listening. Know, know yourself in this sense. Know what you have to offer because everybody has a God-given something to offer. Learn what that is. The second idea here is seeing needs. Love is about keeping your eyes wide open. Just think about parenthood. You have a baby and your constant focus 24 hours a day, seven days a week is what does she need? And the 24 hour focus called investment is what pulls us in and it causes our love for the child to grow to the point that as your child grows more independent, you still continue to see needs. You sometimes even see needs that aren't really there. And so we spoil our children. We spoil them with love. This is what Christ is calling us to in relation to each other. That we learn that constant focus with each other. Investment. So I don't just say things like, if there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. But not really mean that. Love doesn't stop with, let me know. Love opens its eyes and sees what's needed. And then a third idea in this verse. What happens when you see someone you love hurting or in need? You get a feeling. You get a feeling in your gut, a knot, a feeling in your gut that you should do something. And that's one thing this verse is talking about here when it talks about not showing compassion. The King James Version uses the phrase, shutteth up his bowels, which is a pretty literal rendering of the Greek there. 
So the third idea in this verse is when you see one of us in need and your gut tells you to do something about it, don't ignore it. Here's what happens to me sometimes. I see a need and my gut says do something. But then my self-centeredness or laziness or resistance to love kicks in and says, well, I don't have the time or I don't have the resources or somebody else will do it or I was already on my way to do something important or maybe even more honestly, I don't know that I care that much. And when that happens, when I talk myself out of my gut feeling, I'm turning my back on love for my spiritual family. This verse is saying if we deny the compassion we feel for others, we're turning our backs on love. That's serious. And so verse 18 says, Dear children, we should not love only by word or tongue, but by action and truth. So it doesn't really matter what we say. What we say may not be true. We may be just fooling ourselves, thinking that if we say it, it must be true. But the truth, that is the way things really are, shows up in our actions, in what we do. I think it's good when we say it, but when we show it, we know it's real. But acting on our love is risky business. The risk that we'll invest our time, our money, our efforts, our very souls, and something bad will happen. That there will be a misunderstanding, a falling out, or that we might get taken advantage of, that we might be forgotten in our time of need. Someone in the group might betray us, and the group takes the other person's side. Or maybe someone we've loved so much dies and leaves us feeling empty. This is the risky business of love. And these are real possibilities. So we fear sticking our neck out and getting it chopped off. I understand that fear. I've experienced it. So what do we do with our fear? Let it control our behavior? Cause us to hold everybody at arm's length? 1 John 4 and verse 18 says no. There it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Christianity is about love, not fear. And love is about embracing one another, seeing each other's needs, and investing in meeting those needs. But get this too, and we're not so good at this part. <laughs> Love is also about getting close to each other. Close enough to each other that we begin to see flaws. Close enough to each other that we begin to have a, a little conflict. But then it's about loving each other anyway. And it's about helping each other deal with the problems and by God's mercy, overcoming them. We all need an idea in our head at all times. And the idea is someone in this church needs me. And what God expects of you is to keep your eyes open to the person or persons who need you. And I can't tell you who it is. I can't tell you what you can give them to meet their needs. But if I, if I read this passage in 1 John right, you'll know in your gut if you've committed yourself to love. We need to pray to God to help us love each other. 
looking to the fantastic and mind-blowing example that he set for us through the cross. And to ask ourselves, who in this church needs me? Do you love like Christ calls us to love? Do you need to admit a lack of love for your church family? Maybe first of all to yourself. That you've let hatred or resentment or jealousy grow and take over. Have you been holding back when it comes to love? Afraid to risk because of some past hurt. Search your heart. Only Christ can heal a broken heart. And he knows all about what a broken heart feels like. If you don't have Christ, come to him. If you need to soften a hardened heart, come to him. Come this morning to say what's in your heart. Come now as we stand and sing. So there's a fountain free for you and me. So he figures he's really pretty sick and needs to stay away from everybody. And that's the thing we need to do when we are sick. So I, I applaud him for doing that. Uh, hopefully he's listening to this and uh, he doesn't, his head doesn't get too big. So anyhow, but, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really a missing thing when, when somebody's not here, especially when Anthony's not here. Uh, thank you, Anthony, for all you do for us. We all feel that. We all do feel that. So get well. Get well. Get well. So let's keep the prayers going for the for the Hortons, for the Finleys that are traveling, and for anybody else that I'm probably forgetting and missing here, but they're on my prayer list anyhow. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. I'd like you to stay just a second after, well, maybe three seconds after, and we'll sing happy birthdays to those that I have the list in my pocket. I actually know their names. And one of them's a good, very good friend of mine, and that's uh, Brent Stockman. So uh, it's his birthday now. I think he's 39 years old or something. Like, I don't know. Whatever. You know, so uh, is there anything else we need to talk about? I know I'm talking too much. Does anybody else have some prayer, prayer requests? Everybody keep my dad. I like everybody keep my dad in prayer. Andy's dad, right. Was that Arthur? He's, he's in the hospital. He's having kidney problems. He's really? Uh, okay. Trying to shut down. That'd be our, our, Arthur Vance, right? Yeah, all right. Uh, we'll keep him in his prayer, definitely. That, that's for sure. And all else that are on our list, and ones that we're thinking about constantly, and pray for each other. We pray for each other, all right? We're going to sing one, five, the first verse of 738. 
take, uh, take attention to the name of us, take the name of Jesus with you, and uh, then we'll be closed in prayer. Thank you all for being here today, and be safe. 738. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. <clears throat> Take it then where you go. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy.